Hello friends, this video on unit and measurement part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Please make sure that you have watched videos on unit and measurement part 1 to part 5 before going ahead with part 6. Next we would discuss least count error. What is least count? Least count is the smallest value an instrument can measure. It is the smallest value an instrument can measure. For example, you must be having a scale at your home, the normal scale which you use in your geometry box. If you observe that, there would be divisions like this. I'll just draw a rough, rough figure to make you understand. For example, you would have something like this. So this is the smallest division that your scale can measure. There is no subdivisions inside this. Now let us suppose you want to measure a you may want to measure the length of an object which is lesser than this small division. Then you cannot measure that with your meter scale. Correct? So this division, this is the least count. That means this is the smallest value that your meter scale can measure. So when we talk of least count error, we mean to say that in case of certain instruments, the small division of the main scale doesn't coincide with the small division of the vernier scale. The best example of least count error would be the vernier calipers. What is vernier calipers? It is an instrument which is used to measure the thickness or length of very thin objects which we normally cannot measure with our meter scale. So in vernier calipers we have a main scale, this is the main scale and there is a vernier scale. So least count error arises when the zero of the main scale and the zero of the vernier scale do not coincide. That means how we define least count error is one main scale division minus one vernier scale division. That is the least count error. So let us understand it once again. Least count means the smallest value that an instrument can measure. Least count error arises when the smallest value that an instrument can measure has certain uncertainty involved in it. For example, the vernier calipers. It has two scales, the main scale and the vernier scale. The least count of this instrument would be where the zeros of zero of the vernier scale would coincide with that of the main scale. So zero of the main scale would coincide with the zero of the vernier scale. If they coincide exactly, then there is no least count error. But if they do not coincide exactly, then there is a least count error involved. So that is the least count error. Now, let us now discuss certain kinds of error, like the absolute error. Absolute error is the difference between individual measurement and true value of a quantity. That is, the measurement which we take and the actual value of the quantity which we are measuring. Normally, it is denoted by modulus of delta A. Since it is modulus, therefore it is always positive. Modulus of any quantity is always positive. Let us take an example. Suppose we have any quantity which we have measured 10 times. Now if I ask you what is the absolute error involved in each of the measurements, then you would say this is the absolute error involved in the first measurement which is the actual measurement minus the true value of the quantity. Similarly, the absolute error in the second measurement is the measured value minus the true value and so on. So that is absolute error. Let us now discuss relative error. 
when I say relative error, it is the ratio of mean absolute error to mean value of the quantity measured. For example, let us suppose we have a quantity which we discussed in case of absolute error. So we measured that quantity some 10 times. So the absolute, we measured the quantity 10 times. Now the absolute errors involved in the measurements are Similarly, in the second measurement, the absolute error would be this. Similarly, in the third measurement, it would come out to be this and so on. Mean abs when I say mean absolute error, that means it is the mean of all these absolute errors. So the mean absolute error would be equal to delta A1 plus delta A2 plus dot 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 till delta A10. This divided by 10. So this will be the mean absolute error. So relative error is this mean absolute error. So this will be the value of delta A mean. So relative error is this value divided by the mean of the actual quantity. Clear? Okay. The next is percentage error. Percentage error is nothing but the relative error expressed in terms of percentage. That is relative error in terms of percentage. First you calculate relative error. This, this was your relative error and then multiply it by 100. It is normally denoted by delta A. So what did we study? We studied absolute error which is denoted by modulus of delta A. We studied relative error which is delta A mean divided by A mean and we studied percentage error that is relative error into 100. And this is denoted by delta A. Now, let us look at a few numerical problems now. In successive measurements of period of oscillation of a pendulum, the readings turn out to be 2.63 seconds, 2.56 seconds, 2.42 seconds, 2.71 seconds and 2.80 seconds. Calculate the absolute errors, relative error and percentage error. Okay, so let us now let us first calculate absolute error. We know for absolute error, how would you, how there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 measurements. So the absolute errors we will calculate like this. Delta A1 would be equal to, modulus of delta A1 will be equal to A1 minus a mean correct now what will be the value of a mean let us calculate the value of a mean a mean would be 2.63 plus 2.56 plus 2.42 plus 2.71 plus 2.80 this divided by this will come out to be 2.62 seconds. Now, we know A mean. So, delta A1 would be equal to 2.63 minus 2.62. So, this will come out to be 0 0.01 seconds. Similarly, we will calculate delta A2 which will be A2 minus A mean. So that will be equal to 2.56 minus 2.62. This will be equal to 0 0.06 seconds. Again, delta A3 will be A3 minus A mean. 
that is equal to 2.42 minus 2.62 that comes out to be 0 0.20 seconds. Again delta A4 that is A4 minus A mean which is equal to 2.71 minus 2.62 which is equal to 0 0.09 seconds and finally delta A5 that is equal to A5 minus A mean and this is equal to 2.80 minus 2.62 which is equal to 0 0.18 seconds. So these are the values of absolute errors. So we got the value of the absolute errors. Now we have to calculate the relative error. Now as we know relative error is equal to delta A mean divided by A mean. Now we have to calculate the mean value of all the absolute errors. So let us do that first. So delta A mean B equal to 0 0.01 we will take average of all these values which we obtained that is 0 0.01 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.15 divided by 5. So this comes out to be 0 0.11 seconds. So this is, so therefore relative error will be equal to 0 0.11 divided by A mean. So A mean is 2.62. So this divided by 2.62. Therefore this comes out to be 0 0.04. So this is the value of the relative error. Therefore, the percentage error would be relative error multiplied by 100. So, this is the relative error multiplied by 100. So, it comes out to be 4%. Clear? So, we derived all the values for absolute error, for relative error and for the percentage error. I hope it is clear to you now that what are the three type kinds of error which we normally need to calculate and how do we put them into formula. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.